Hello everybody, welcome to Worship for Sunday the 3rd of January 2021. Happy New Year! It is lovely to have you with us, wherever you're joining from, across the town, across the area, across the world. Whether you're watching on your TV or your laptop or your mobile phone screen. There is a service happening in the church building this morning as well, but they're following exactly the same pattern as we are. So we're united in worship from wherever we are this morning. I'm going to start by praying for us before we start our worship together. Father God, we thank you that you are with us. We thank you that your Holy Spirit dwells with each one of us and that you hover over our homes now. We pray that as we sing and as we pray and as we read your word together this morning, you would bless each and every one of us with a sense of your presence. Teach us something new about you today, Lord. Help us to feel closer to you after this than we do at the start. Amen. We're going to enter into a time of confession together now, bringing before God the things that we are not proud of, things that we have done or thought or said, or that we failed to do or think or say this week. This is a special confession that's written for this use at this time of year, at the first worship service of the new year. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and the splendour of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from all our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for the Day. This is a special prayer written for today. Eternal Lord God, we give you thanks for bringing us through the changes of time to the beginning of another year. Forgive us the wrong that we have done in the year that is past and help us to spend the rest of our days to your honour and glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Our Bible reading today is written in Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, beginning to read at verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfilment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, 
the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together before we start. Father, would you take the words that I have prepared and would you breathe your Holy Spirit through them, that we would hear them and that we would be transformed into the likeness of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. These are the opening words of this glorious passage from the letter to the Ephesians. The whole passage is a prayer. It's a doxology, a hymn of praise to God. It's written in Greek in one long sentence, very long sentence, and follows the form of a Jewish prayer that's called a berakar, which is a hymn of praise, blessing God for who he is and what he has done. As you read on through the verses, Paul almost seems to tumble over himself in praise, building one on top of another with things that he is grateful to God for. It's effusive and abundant, and rightly so, for how great is our God. This is perhaps even more impressive when we remember that at the time of writing this letter, Paul was a prisoner in Rome. He was under house arrest and chained to a Roman soldier at all times. And it's from this place that he writes such abundant praise to God. This passage, even though it is effusive and tumbles over itself, can also be seen to follow through in three distinct stages. Firstly, we are reminded that God is sovereign and has had a plan since the beginning. Verse 4 tells us, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. All of history, all people, all that is or has or will be, is caught up into God's plan and purposes. Secondly, that purpose is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. We are delivered, saved, forgiven and redeemed in Jesus, through whom all things are being brought up into unity and restored to wholeness. And finally, towards the end of the passage, Paul changes from speaking about us to speaking about you. He gets personal. In 13 and 14, he says, You also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. You have been included in Christ. You are marked with a seal and live to the praise of his glory. This whole passage reminds us of the very great blessing it is to be called into God's church, to be those who are marked by the seal of the Holy Spirit and called to live to God's praise and glory. Paul was able to sing this hymn of abundant praise from his prison cell. He was himself a prodigious preacher of the gospel. He spent himself in the service of Christ, crisscrossing the ancient world to fulfil the call on his life to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. How hard must it have been for him to be held captive, to be in chains and behind closed doors? And yet still he praises God and he preaches via the means that have made available to him, letters like this one. Paul has adapted. In the year that's just gone, we have all had to adapt. We've not been able to serve God in the ways that we would like. I wonder what that has meant specifically for you. Do you feel particularly called to hospitality, to serving teas and coffees, perhaps in church or in the coffee shop in the hall, or inviting your neighbours round for a chat and opening your home up to people? Those are all things we've not been at liberty to do for many, many months now. Do you feel called to children's work or to serving and helping in worship? Have you felt really frustrated that you can't serve the church and the Lord in the way that you want to? I'll be honest with you, I have been frustrated for most of the last year. 
I have a specific call on my life. And in so many, many ways, I just don't know how to do that from behind a laptop. This passage then, written by Paul in Chains, reminds us that God is always sovereign. He is always God. And he chose us in him before the creation of the world. He chooses us for a purpose, to the praise of his glory. And he doesn't expect us to let COVID-19 or the limits and restrictions that follow that to stop us. We must, as Paul did, adapt and praise God from our cells, from our chains, from behind our laptops, from two metres distance apart. This is our first worship service in 2021, a new year, a fresh start. We are all filled with hope that the vaccine will mean some, a return to something like normality at some point this year. But I do think we all need to be honest that it will take some time and things will be strange and difficult for a good while yet. And it's with that in mind and this incredible hymn of praise that is set for the whole church to read together this day as part of the lectionary readings that I would like us to look at the words of the Methodist Church's beautiful covenant prayer together. It's a challenging prayer. A friend of mine who is a Methodist minister, she's very used to leading her own congregation in worship as they pray this prayer together every year. She told me once of how hard she had found it praying it when she herself was laid low with an illness called neuralgia. It affected all the nerves in her face and she was in constant pain. And she was someone who was so used to being active and creative and serving God and the church with an energy that, to be honest, I found exhausting. She was profoundly challenged by the lines of this prayer that say, let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Now, I must say to you, there is absolutely no judgment at all if you do not feel able to pray this prayer. It is a challenging prayer to say. But it felt right to include it at the start of another year where I suspect we will all find life challenging, especially because we can't do the things that we feel called to to serve God in the ways that we want to do them. So if you do feel able to pray, do so in the light of the hymn of praise for who God is that we've just read together from Ephesians. Grace unending, love undeniable, sovereign and holy. And whether you are able to pray them or not, I pray that you will know that you are loved and caught up into Christ, who is working to bring all things together into himself, restored and whole and unified and glorious with him at the head. May we all know the blessings of being part of this amazing story of love and grace this year, whatever this year will bring. I'm going to leave the words of the prayer up on the screen for a few moments in quiet as we read them through together. And then if you feel that you would like to, you can join me in praying them. So we prepare ourselves now to pray this prayer of covenant renewal together. I'll just remind you, there's no judgment at all if you don't feel able to pray this prayer. It is a challenging prayer. I'll introduce it with some specific words again written for this purpose. And then those who feel able to can say the words with me when we get to them. Beloved in Christ, let us again claim for ourselves this covenant which God has made with his people and take upon us the yoke of Christ. This means that we are content that he appoint us our place and our work, and that he himself be our reward. Christ has many services to be done, 
Some are easy, others are difficult. Some bring honour, others bring reproach. Some are suitable to our natural inclinations and material interests, and others are contrary to both. In some, we may please Christ and please ourselves. In others, we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Yet the power to do all these things is given to us in Christ, who strengthens us. Therefore, let us make this covenant of God our own. Let us give ourselves to him, trusting in his promises and relying on his grace. Take a moment of quiet now, and then if you feel able to say these words along with me, please do. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and wholeheartedly yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, glorious and blessed God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. So be it. And the covenant now made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. To the words, Lord for the years, the response is, we give our thanks and praise. We come before God at the start of this year, conscious of many memories, thoughts and feelings. We look back at times bathed in sunlight and other times cast in deep shadow. We see faces and places times and seasons, love and loss, and we offer God our memories. What gave us most pleasure this last year? What do we want to put behind us? Gracious God, this last year has been filled, dominated by the pandemic. Yet we thank you for your quiet, solid presence through every part of the year. Rejoicing with us, weeping with us, loving, persuading, nudging, comforting. Lord, for the years, we give our thanks and praise. As the new year begins, we look ahead with both eagerness and anxiety. For this year could hold so much that would be wonderful, but we're never more than a news headline away from a crisis. We offer God our hopes at the birth of the year. What do we most long for this year? What do we intend to do differently this year? Gracious God, you hold the coming year in the palm of your hand. You promise that your love will be inexhaustible and that you'll work for our well-being. Thank you for those good promises to remember and to claim afresh each day. Lord, for the years, we give our thanks and praise. And for the world around us, we hold our breath. So much to desire, so much to fear. But the better way is surely this, so much to pray for, so much to work for. What places are most in need of peace and hope? The countries, the poor countries in the world, which will get the vaccine last, or will they? 
which world leaders are most in need of our prayers? You think of the election in Uganda in a few days' time. We think of the transition in America to the new president and his administration. Gracious God, it is your will to hold together the nations of the earth in a single peace. Let the imprint of your love be seen in every troubled country. Let the earth breathe more freely at the end of the coming year. And may we have made our own contribution to the earth's freedom. Lord of the years, we give our thanks and praise. Finally, gracious Father, we offer a special prayer for our new friends, Rachel and Rob, and especially for Rachel as she begins her maternity leave tomorrow. We pray for the baby, for a safe arrival. We pray for your overruling, Sovereign Lord, in every aspect. We pray for protection from harm, we pray for health in every aspect. We pray that you release your power, the power of the Holy Spirit, moment by moment, through every day of this maternity leave, and pour out your blessing on them and on us. Lord, for the years, we give our thanks and praise. Let's join in these words together. Lord of this year, we give you our faith and our hunger for the kingdom. Amen.
and a final closing prayer for us to pray together. Jesus, Lord of time, hold us in your eternity. Jesus, image of God, travel with us the life of faith. Jesus, friend of sinners, heal the brokenness of our world. Jesus, Lord of tomorrow, draw us into your future. Amen. The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me for worship today, the 3rd of January 2021. This is my last Sunday with you for a while because I start my maternity leave tomorrow. But there are plenty of exciting people coming to cover services over the next six months. And I will be back at Easter and I will see you all then. In the meantime, thank you all for your love and support for Rob and me and for the bump. We look forward to introducing you to the bump when it is a baby in just a few short days, I'm sure. Take care. And God bless. If you'd like to donate by text, you can send a text STHPCC gift three to seven double O eight five to give three pounds. Change the three to a five to give five pounds. Or if you'd like to set up regular monthly giving to St. Helens Parish Church, contact the parish giving scheme on O three double three. 0021271 and our church reference number is 2206221911. A reminder that next Sunday, the 10th of January, we will have both a service in church at 10 a.m., which is a service of Holy Communion conducted by Bishop Bev, and an online worship service. There's more information about the COVID regulations for worship in church available on the church Facebook page and website. Next Sunday, we begin a sermon series looking at trees in the Bible, and it promises to be really interesting. Thank you to all who have helped with the creation of this online worship service. If you'd like to help by reading the Bible or praying either in church or for the online service, Please contact the church office on 01744 229 and they'll arrange for putting you on the rotor.